So just for the recording, I did post a document here in the class notes section of Teams. You're going to want to go to this document. You're going to download it. Once you download it, it's going to open. Everything I've just typed in red, um, you're going to have to type in or handwrite yourself. Um, so far, all we've said is that you're going to start with step one, and this is how we get the perfect Lewis structure every time. So we're going to follow these steps in order. So the first step is to count the total number of valence electrons. In this example, I have sulfur and oxygen. I have one sulfur and I have three oxygen, so I just listed that out. I said that sulfur has six valence electrons, so one times six gave us six electrons. Oxygen also has six valence electrons, so three times six gives us 18 electrons. And then we have this negative two charge, and up here it says that if you have a negative charge, that means that you gained an electron. Well, here I have a negative two, meaning I've gained two. So in order to find the total number of electrons, we just add everything together. So two plus six plus 18 gives us a total of 26 electrons. Great question. So if it's positive, you subtract. If it's negative, you add. Right, so if it's positive, you definitely want to subtract. That's correct. Good, very good. All right, um, now that we've figured out the first step, let's move on to the second step. So this says create a carbon skeleton placing the least electronegative atom in the center and all the other, other atoms go around the carbon. So um, we have two atoms to consider. We have sulfur and oxygen. Who is the least electronegative out of these two? We just did something very similar for bell work. Sulfur, very good. So just to remind people, the electronegativity increases going towards fluorine. So sulfur is further down, and we know that as you go down, it decreases. I know it's confusing, don't worry. So the, something that I just want to remind you guys, fluorine is the most electronegative. Oxygen is actually the second most electronegative. So oxygen really never goes in the middle. Um, there's exceptions, don't get me wrong, there's always exceptions, but typically oxygen doesn't go in the middle. Um, and as you go down, electronegativity decreases. That's why we put sulfur in the middle. All right, so it's really hard for me to do this here, so I'm going to go to paint, and I'm going to draw it. So sulfur goes in the center, and then we're going to singly bond. These little lines represent single bonds, all of the oxygens. There were three oxygens, so oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Yes, that's correct, Michael. All right, when we do this, how many electrons are represented in every line? Two, that's correct. So this line represents two electrons, one, two. So in total, how many electrons did I just use to create this, what we call skeleton? Six, perfect. Well, I had 26 electrons to start off with, right? From step one, that's what we counted. I just used six electrons. How many electrons do I have left? 20. Perfect, so this is step two. That's what we call creating the skeleton. I'm gonna try and copy this picture into the Word document. All right, step three, it says to use the remaining electrons to fill the octet of the peripheral atoms. What does this mean, octet? What does that mean? They want eight, exactly. That's that rule that they want eight valence electrons. So I'm going to put eight E minus. We know E minus stands for electrons. And what does the word peripheral mean?
He forgot. <laughs> what does mean? Anyone? Outer. Very good. So outer atoms. So who's my outer atoms? Is it sulfur or oxygen? Oxygen. Good. So basically, we want to make sure that our oxygen atoms have eight valence electrons. I'm going to erase this because that was from step two. So I had 20 electrons left over from step two. I need to keep adding electrons to oxygen until it gets to eight. Right now it only has two. So now I'm going to go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just used six electrons, so I need to subtract. I cannot use more than 20 electrons. I only have 20 left, so I can't, I can't go lower than that. So I have 14. All right, cool. This oxygen is happy because now it has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. So it has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I just used six, so I'm going to subtract six. When I do that, I have eight left, eight electrons left. And again, this one needs eight as well. So it has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just use six more electrons and I have two left. As long as I don't use more than I have, I'm good. So that was step three. I'm just gonna try and make this smaller. Sulfur is going to get lone pairs. Yes, that's going to be the next step. It's a little difficult to do this online, but I'm doing the best I can. So thank you for being patient. So step three is done. So now we're going to do step four. If you have any remaining electrons, just like Michael said, you're going to put them on the center atom, and in our case, it's sulfur. So sulfur is going to get those last two electrons. No, oh, wrong one. So we had two electrons left over from the previous step. We're going to use those two electrons on sulfur. So now we, we used our last two electrons. We now have zero electrons. That was step four. Easy. Any questions so far? Is everybody following me? I haven't lost anyone. Okay. Please stop me at any point if you're confused. I'm going to have to just make this lower. All right, <clears throat> now step five. Step five says to make sure that all atoms satisfy the octet rule. This means that all atoms should have eight valence electrons. There are a few atoms that can break the octet rule. So there are some atoms, we call them hypovalent. So I'm going to highlight this. Hypovalent means that, what do you guys think hypovalent means before I just tell you? Anyone have any clue what hypovalent means? What does the prefix hypo mean? What do you think? So hyper is different, but what is hyper, Corbin? Very active, right? It means you have like an excess of energy. You have too much energy. What do you think hypo means?
No energy, exactly, it's the opposite. So hyper is too much, hypo is too little. That's what those prefixes mean. So when we're talking about valent, valence refers to valence electrons. So hypovalent means that you can have less than the perfect number of valence electrons, so less than eight. And you're still happy, that's perfectly fine. There are only four elements that you guys need to know that are hypovalent. So hydrogen, helium, boron, and beryllium are the only four elements that are going to be happy with less than eight electrons. So hydrogen only needs two to be happy. Probably, yeah. I, I, I like to repeat things as much as possible, so you might have seen this before. <laughs> Um, helium only needs two, boron needs six, and beryllium needs four. So um, those those are some exceptions. So I'm, let me just write that less than eight. I mean, I already wrote it here, but never hurts to have repeating. What about hypervalent? What do you guys think that means? If hypo means less than eight, hyper means more than eight, exactly. So these hypervalent atoms are perfectly happy even if they have more than eight. So the elements that can be hypervalent are row three and below. So if we're looking at the periodic table, everything in this period, three, oh, excuse me, period three, and below can have more than eight. If it's in periods one and two, it cannot have more than eight, not possible. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but way back in the day, we learned about the orbitals, the S, the P, the D, and the F orbital. Do you guys remember learning like the S orbital, the P orbital, the D orbital, and the F orbital? We did like electron. Good. How many lines do we draw for the S orbital? This is like review. Do you guys remember? Anyone? Mm, I'm going to give you guys a hint. The S or... Uh, Aya, you're almost there. You draw one line, but you can fit two electrons in that one line. So S orbital can hold two electrons, but only one line. What about the P orbital? How many, how many lines did we draw for the P orbital? Three. Perfect. And you can fit six electrons in the p orbital, but we draw three lines, six electrons. Remember, it goes up, 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 and then we pair down, down, down. So in the first two rows, in the first two periods, you have, remember, we talked about the s block. See the s block elements in the first two? And we have the p block elements over here. So you can see that in the first two periods, all you have is s and you have p. So in total, you can only fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's why rows one and two cannot have more than eight because all they have is S and P. Once you get to the D block, once you get to that third row, even though it's not drawn here, you guys remember that the D block begins in the third row. So all of these elements right here are actually 3D. Do you guys remember that when we did electron configurations? That the D block is always one row less? Maybe. Maybe we forgot. Maybe we didn't. Let me show you guys a picture. I feel like I've been coughing a lot. Yeah, sure. I'm actually going to show you guys a picture. You guys remember learning about how this was the 1s. Helium actually belongs here, so that's why this is both two 1s's. Then we have the 2s's and the 2p's, 3s's, and then the 3p's. But when we get to the fourth row, this is 4s. But remember that the third, the d block actually is always one row less, so this is 3d. You guys remember that? And then we go back to 4P, 5S, and then again, the D, the D, right? Good memory, good hour recall. So then this 
uh, D block again is always one row less. So instead of saying 5D, it's always 4D. And this is this is in the sixth row, but it's 5D and so on and so forth. Anyone else ringing any bells? Hopefully. OK, <laughs> all right, good. Um, so the reason that the third row is able to have more than eight electrons is because that third row has the D block and that D block serves like storage space. So now we can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's our eight, our octet. And in addition to that, we can also hold more electrons inside of this D block. Any questions? Good, good. Hoping it makes sense. All right, so let's go back um, oh, to our worksheet. So that's the reason that, again, these row three can be hypervalent. All right, so the whole point of explaining all of this is that we have to make sure that in the Lewis structure we have so far, our atoms are happy, all right? So let's go back to our Lewis structure. So the things that we have are sulfur and oxygen. Before we do anything, are any of those atoms hypovalent? Meaning, are any of them happy with less than eight? Let me type the question. In our example, are any atoms hypo? No, right? Because the only four options, no, right? It would have been hydrogen, helium, boron, and beryllium. Well, oxygen and sulfur are not hypovalent, so we need to have at least eight. So let's make sure. Does oxygen have eight valence electrons? What do you guys think? Well, does this oxygen have eight valence electrons? Yeah, it does, right? It does actually. So each one of these dots counts as a valence electron. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And remember that this line counts as two. So seven and eight. So there are eight here, so he's happy. That's my version of a smiley face. Now this oxygen looks exactly like this one and it looks exactly like this one. So do you guys think these also have eight valence electrons? Yeah, right? So again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's also happy. Now we just got to check to see if sulfur is happy. So how many valence electrons do you guys see around sulfur? Perfect, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each line counts as two, two, four, six, eight. So sulfur is also happy. That's the bell, but just give me one second. So since all of our atoms satisfy the octet rule, step five is done. So I'm just going to move this out of the way put that into the document. Tomorrow, we're going to continue on. I'm just going to, up until this point, I would like for you guys to have this document filled up until step five. Tomorrow, I'll finish the very last step, which is formal charge, and then I'm going to give you guys a worksheet to work on. Um, so please make sure that you have all of these notes in your notebook or printed at some point. If you don't have any questions, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.